Hello everyone. Um, we are the Choose, and I am Cheryl. And I'm Jesse. And we are here to talk about our move from Vancouver to Amsterdam. <laughs> to start off, we're both Canadians, born and raised in Vancouver, Canada. Yep. Um, we got married last summer in 2018. We sure did. And we've been together for eight and a half years all together. Yep. And we thought it's time for us to make a big change in our lives. We've been super comfortable and super fortunate to live a great life in Vancouver. And it's about time that we get out there and see what the world is like, uh, start a new life in Amsterdam. Yeah, and also this is our first time ever vlogging and recording a video on YouTube. It is. Um, we're hoping to um, share experiences abroad yeah. and I know um, we're hoping that maybe our experiences could help people who may be interested in moving to Amsterdam or just simply moving abroad from where they currently live in. But also we just kind of want to document it so we can watch back later on and remember these awesome memories that we're making. So if you're interested, uh, let's get going! <laughs> We just arrived at our temporary apartment. It's super tiny. Little bed, little dining area, little kitchen, and apparently a wine storage and a washroom. So cute. Like there's no oven, but they gave us a wine cellar. Yeah. <laughs> and look at this little two stove. That's so cute. I've never seen that before. How did you enjoy the flight? Uh, it was okay. It was a nine hour flight from Vancouver to Amsterdam direct, which was great. Um, nine hours isn't too long, right? I took a grapple because I knew I had to sleep throughout most of that flight to kind of adjust with the jet lag because once we got to Amsterdam, it was at 12 p.m. So I needed to sleep throughout the plane ride um, in order to be awake for the next day. From the airport, I think it probably was like a 15 to 20 minute car ride, maybe even shorter. Um, but we wanted to use Uber to get there. So we needed like data in order to use Uber. So at the airport, I found like this company called Labara. La Barra has like a stand within the airport. I think it was like 30 euros for three gigabytes and like a few a few hundred minutes to call within um, the Netherlands, uh, which is a great option. It's not too expensive uh, if you really need data from you know the airport to the city center. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, if you wait until you get to the city center, you can actually get much cheaper prepaid data. Um, so if you have the option to maybe just take a taxi and not use your data when you get there, I would just wait so you can save money. But anyways, fast forward, we got into the studio, um, you saw some clips earlier, and it's super tiny, very cute, in one of the best areas in Amsterdam, I must say. It's called Jordan, 
and um, it's really close to city center, probably a 10 to 15 minute walk to like Central, which is the central uh, train station. Um, and it's a great location. We are so blessed. Like mm -hmm. honestly, there's great stuff around here. It's super cute. There's always Everything's markets really open on our street every day. Yeah. Even it's on a Monday. It's adorable. And so the first day when we got here, we unpacked some of our luggage. We couldn't really unpack. We just unpacked our carry-on luggage actually because it's tiny here. So we made plans with two friends of ours. We had dinner with them in the area. Yeah. So we had dinner at La Perla, which is a really great pizza place um, in Jordan. And then as we were like walking out and like just strolling around the city, one of the biggest canals, I have no idea the name of the canal. I should, probably should have researched this ahead a lot of time. Of canals in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, it's one of their, I think, widest canals. And they usually host festivals and um, I think... Uh, it's also with the Pride Parade. Is. Yeah, the Pride Parade was there as well. And uh, the concert was called, I have it written down here because I know it's hard to read. It's called Pressingrat. Um, concert and it was an outdoor classical concert where all these local boats were um, parked right in front of the stage. Yeah, they just basically played amazing live classical music um, throughout the night. <laughs> So the next two days were basically recovery from jet lag. We did go around the shopping district. It was called Nine Streets. A ton of cute boutique shops and coffee and um, little cafes with like baked goods and stuff. So a really cute place to walk around. Just saw a few markets out outside. Um, and then on Monday, we went to food hall. Yes. which was in like the southwest area um, and it was a really cool food hall you go in and it's like this really big like industrial building with a ton of brick walls and stuff you go into this like room and it's huge there are a ton of like kind of food truck looking shop yeah, there was like yeah dim chinese dim sum mm -hmm. there was mexican tacos and the great burger shop there there's also um, pos goods, so cocktails. Cute mini spa. Oh, is there? Yeah, I, I think there was. That. And there was. It was poke as well. Yeah, it was poke. There's a ton of international food there. We actually ended up getting this, um, like veggie sticks. They were like deep fried, um, like vegetables, which were really, really good. Like I highly recommend that to everyone who's visiting. Um, and then we ended up going to somehow made our way to the pipe which is this really cool like hipster millennial slash like apparently spanish district i think mm -hmm. um and it was we fell in love yeah. <laughs> we fell in love it kind of felt like our our area that we lived in back in vancouver we lived in mount pleasant area which is a lot of like really cool boutiques and coffee shops and a lot of like uh, young families and millennials who live there and it was very similar in the pipe and that's day two and three <laughs> We just found this really cool coffee sh coffee spot, and um, I believe it was like more of like a millennial area because clearly everything is super cushy. <laughs> and surprisingly, we found kombucha like everywhere here. So we got a ginger and kefir lime kombucha, and it came with a super cute cup. So let's see if it's any good. And then we're waiting for our Korean. Tacos. Yeah. Our food came and it looks so good. This kombucha here is perfection. It's called kombucha and it's ginger and kefir lime. And it's actually made in Amsterdam. Uh, it's really interesting. I actually brew it with um, Sichuan peppers and jasmine. I've never seen kombucha food with peppers before. It actually tastes really good. 
don't really taste the peppers, but you know, kombucha has a bit of a kick anyways. On Tuesday, we had a really productive day because um, that was the day that we had our meetings with I am I in Amsterdam, which is a government office for expats to go to set up their permanent residence card. So that office was in the south, which is like a business district, and that's where the World Trade Center office is, and that's exactly where the I am office is. What happened there was we brought in our documentation from Canada and we took a few photos, some for photos. The ID. and then a week later we'll get our official Dutch permit cards. Yes, that was super painless. Um, it wasn't quick though. It did take an hour, about an hour, to get our um, residency, um, and then we had our second appointment where we went to the bank, ABN, and. Uh, now we have bank accounts set up. With this appointment, it was so thorough and detailed, in a good way though, because they, they provided so much information for people who are moving here as uh, expats and what we can and cannot do with our bank accounts. Um, and as, as international people, I think that's really great because we knew nothing about how uh, credit works here, debit works here. Um, we learned a few things. There is no credit in Amsterdam. There's no the credit. You know, people don't use credit cards in the Netherlands. Which um, is but, great. But they do get credit cards, but yeah. it's just so they can make purchases online. It's not like the credit card culture in North America where you you know, use your credit in order to purchase something with money that you don't have yet. Um, here they don't believe in that and you don't get points or cash back. Cash back. Or like you don't get any anything from using your credit card. Everything is done by the bank card. So in Canada, we use our it's called debit card. Yeah. Um, we call it the Maestro. Mm -hmm. Later on, on the same day, yeah, we got our bikes. Yes. Um, and just to back it up a little bit, everybody in Amsterdam bikes as their primary mode of transportation, and it's a easy way to get anywhere within the city. It's probably less than a 20 minute bike ride to get anywhere within Amsterdam. So we are using a service called Swap Be It. And not sponsored. Not sponsored. <laughs> uh, it is a monthly subscription. Yeah. Um, we got the most basic bike, they're called the original, um, for 50, 50 euros yeah. per month. We just made it to Vondel Park safely, soundly, <laughs> on our bikes that are parked right there. This is our first time biking in Amsterdam. How was it, Jesse? Not gonna lie, I was pretty stressed out for the first five minutes. <laughs> oh, me too. Just overall, just biking with traffic was pretty intimidating, especially when the scooters are passing by you. Yeah. Within, like this much of a gap. Those scare me because they, when they like gas their scooters, it's really loud. Yeah. And then they always do it like right beside you so they, they can pass you quickly. Yeah. It's beautiful here. It's like the Amsterdam version of Stanley Park. Yeah. Um, we were kind of discussing about how big it might be geographically. We think Stanley Park's a little bit bigger. Um, definitely more nature areas at Stanley there's Park. There's probably more space in this park to walk and bike in. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's tons of like cafes and like restaurants that you can go to, which are so beautiful. Um, and look at this. Tons of people here um, having picnics and stuff, which is so cute. And uh, it's, I don't know, it's a great place to kind of hang out and have a picnic.
been a week. Um, Friday slash Saturday marks one week in Amsterdam. And we're actually quite fortunate that we have friends in Amsterdam so that we're not actually planless yeah. um, on a Friday or Saturday night. And we went to the museum area because um, this week, this past weekend, Amsterdam had a kind of an art slash music festival. Um, it is in the museum plane area where all the museums are. Van like Gogh, the Rijks Museum, the Rijks Museum, the Van Gogh Museum. And right in the center, there's like a big patch of like kind of like a parkland, and they put up a ton of like food trucks and a few um, stages. And I think. The the event was called Ewit Market, um, and it's probably one of the biggest cultural festivals. Um, completely free, in right in the middle of Amsterdam, and it went on for three days. We were there on the Friday night. We didn't. We were busy on Saturday and Sunday, so we didn't get to see those. But it was three straight days of just music, culture, food. Um, everybody was picnicking in the middle of the park, and it was a great time. Honestly, yeah, it was really chill, great vibes. <laughs> When it got busy, uh, we decided to actually go back to the food hall. Mm -hmm. So we rode our bikes with our friends and we ended up at the food hall. -in. So it was like we got to see food hall in the morning and then we got to see food hall at night. And nighttime was bumping, it was hot, it, but it was so It's pretty lit. There was yeah. a lot of people. I, yeah. think it, I think a lot of expats like to hang out there because they're playing, you know. Um, Music, the 90s, yeah. R&B, oh, yeah. hip-hop music. It was a great time. There's a DJ there, live DJ there. Was it live? Yeah. I didn't even notice. So we like sat, there's like this upstairs patio area. It wasn't upstairs, it was like downstairs. Yeah, it's a little like a patio. Yeah, and there's like this upstairs patio area. It was not outdoors, it was just like an upstairs second floor area. And there was a foosball, foosball there was there. Uh, darts. Yeah, it was a, it was a great time. Yeah. 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 That's a wrap for our first vlog. Hope yeah. you enjoyed it. Um, we'll get better because we're a little camera shy. Right now. We are. It's just a lot of clips of us doing things. Um, we're a little shy to talk in front of the camera in public right now. We're also right trying now. to convince our friends to also be on <laughs> camera as well. Yeah, so uh, we went through things really briefly in terms of like how we made this happen, and how we got here. But if there's anything in detail you want to know about, let us know in the comments below and we're, we'd be ecstatic to share that with you. One last thing. If you enjoyed it and want to follow our journey of our move to Amsterdam, please like and subscribe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>